Authoritarians and authoritarianism have been a large part of civilization. We had Genghis Khan in Asia, Augusto Pinochet in South America, and Benito Mussolini in Europe. Different times, but all connected as the authoritarian leader of their people. Authoritarianism continues to exist. Recent news fears autocratization in the United States, the intrusion of civil liberties during the coronavirus, and the death of democracy in Hungary. Authoritarianism itself is a belief system that forces people to obey in the pursuit to assume authority, usually in a state. It has manifested itself in many forms, some ideas intended to be authoritarian, some others just corrupted by authoritarians. An authoritarian in the extreme form ideologically promotes authoritarianism, but broadly, authoritarians are individuals that demand people to obey and refuse people freedom to act as they wish. Authoritarians come in all shapes and sizes. Authoritarianism itself is very complicated, in its different variations throughout history. This video will look particularly at the personality and social attitudes of the authoritarian, and how authoritarians behave in two sensitive areas of the political arena. The way someone is studied in personality psychology is by examining their traits and characteristics. Someone can be high in trait openness, showing their creativity, or another might be high in trait aggression, revealing their violence. The authoritarian personality is commonly measured using Ultimae's Right Ring Authoritarian Measurement, RWA for short, used in combination with the Social Dominance Orientation Measurement, SDO for short. Both measures overlap in two areas for studying authoritarians, A. Dangerous World Beliefs, and B. View the world as a competitive place. Strictly speaking, it has been difficult to study authoritarians in terms of traits. Due to political bias and other methodological issues, measures have been revised measurement after measurement. Even Carl Jung's theory on introversion and extroversion have been tested. Although the original creator Ultimae of the RWA claims this is a measure of personality, researchers have developed a more accurate way of using this measure and looking at authoritarians. The preferred alternative lens to look through when studying authoritarians as individuals is by their social attitudes. We now look at how the authoritarian sees the social world. Obvious findings have associated the authoritarian with fundamentalism, aggression towards disobedience, ethnocentrism and prejudice. What seems to bring social cohesion under the authoritarian leader is threats. When a group is threatened their identity is formed under this threat to fight against it. But why go about politics in an authoritarian manner? What is their motivation? For a social attitude perspective, the answer is not surprising. It means authoritarians get what they want without opposition. As there is an inherent link between authoritarianism and dogmatism, the motivation of these efforts is to establish authoritarian submission and order regardless of cultural differences. However, not all authoritarians are power-hungry dictatorial individuals. Some are lower level, some higher level authoritarians. Meaning we can still live in a democratic society, but some people just might have some authoritarian views without promoting a death of democracy in favour of authoritarianism. Ultimae has labelled Donald Trump as an authoritarian. Not to conflict Trump with the likes of Benito Mussolini, as the United States still has a representative democracy, where Mussolini replaced Italy's democracy with fascism. Trump can be seen as an authoritarian, but it shows authoritarians are dimensional. In essence, some are more extreme than others. Now we have established the authoritarian and their essential social views, let's look at how they behave under two political areas. Aggression in politics is touchy. People have used the motive energy aggression gives us in politics to convey views or in extreme cases, force people to the will of the authority. Psychology can help us break down aggression so it is easier to understand. There are four dimensions to aggression, physical aggression and verbal aggression, such as hitting and verbal insults, hostility, which is the anticipation of aggression, and anger, the readiness to become aggressive. On top of this, the General Aggression Model, or GAM for short, combines many social theories into one framework to help us understand the basics of aggression. Aggression is positively correlated with neuroticism and negatively with conscientiousness. Authoritarians are notable for their use of trait aggression. In speeches, emotive language and topics around disgust and contempt can incite aggressive tendencies in the authoritarian followers, leading these citizens to support state-violent policies. 
this all becomes a quick chain reaction. Authoritarians have a predisposition to aggression, which leads to certain interpersonal behaviour which becomes state violence. Authoritarian followers also support these violent policies when there is some justification behind them implementing the policies. Hostility in aggression can be used when the social group is threatened. The fear that the group could be hurt brings about this hostility and anger which can lead to verbal and physical aggression. It is difficult to suggest if aggression is good or bad in politics given its theoretical complexities, but as the psychologist Kalma reminds us, it can lead citizens astray, especially in the case of authoritarian leaders. The second area authoritarians find themselves in is using their nation to their advantage. This has been called nationalism, which is the belief that one's nation is superior, different from patriotism, which is an attachment to one's homeland. RWA positively correlates with nationalism and patriotism, suggesting these two areas of politics might have authoritarian underlying roots. However, nationalism is associated with SDO, whereas patriotism is not. So although authoritarians are attracted to both, this suggests that the more extreme authoritarians are to present their state in terms of nationalism than patriotism. Researchers have used modern day examples of authoritarian politicians using their nation as a fundamental part of their politics, such as the French National Front Party, German Alternative for Germany Party, and the United States Republican Donald Trump. So this relationship between RWA, authoritarians and nationalism is seen across different cultures. Combining nationalism and aggression, authoritarians unite the group of followers under one flag and are not scared to use their trait aggression against potential threats. These are just a couple political areas authoritarians can exploit for their motivation to push their ideas or in extreme cases establish their authoritarian submission. In conclusion, political psychology has found details of authoritarians that are not surprising, but the research still continues to conflict itself when breaking down their specific personality traits. We know authoritarians are better studied in terms of social attitudes and that authoritarians are dimensional, some more authoritarian than others. There are many political areas authoritarians get involved with. This video has just shown how aggression and nationalism has energised the motivations of authoritarians. Authoritarians continue to exist, and probably always will exist. It is helpful to remember the world is more democratic at the moment, and not all authoritarians are seeking to dismantle democracy and our liberties. This has been the third video for this channel, each time improving. A link below to Altamea's right wing authoritarianism measurement has been included so you can measure your own authoritarian side. All references are detailed below and thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.